Okay, welcome back to the next installment in our video tutorial series here for the IDF to PH plugin toolkit. My name is Ed May with uh, Building Type. And um, in this video, um, I want to start to discuss the question of um, U values and, and surface constructions in a little bit more depth. So we've, we, we've seen now that, that we're able to hook into our Rhino scene and pull a bunch of information out of our Rhino scene. Um, We've seen the video able to easily write to our, our PHPP. Um, in, in this video, I definitely want to go a little bit further in depth on the question of where the construction assemblies are being created, how are they being um, established, and um, how are they being assigned to our different surfaces, and then how are we going to manage that information? So how do we easily manage the assignment of those types of constructions to our, to our assemblies? Um, and, and why does this matter? Let's go to our PHPP here, um, and let's go to the verification worksheet. So why does this matter? Again, remember, the one of the questions that we're trying to answer at the moment is why is our heating demand so high? And is there anything we can do to sort of bring that down? And remember, we took a look at our heating worksheet, and we said that the roof um, has a very high U value. So let's now start to, start to take a look at where this U value gets set and how we can adjust it, how we can manage it, how we can control those U values. So if I go back to our areas worksheet in the PHPP here, and let me zoom out just a little bit so that we can see a little bit more. So here is our roof. Our roof is on line 42. Notice that it's getting the correct assignment. So we have the right type being assigned. It looks like we have the right area coming in, so the surface area is being assessed properly. And over here in the building assembly list, it's getting an assignment of exterior roof. So exterior roof. Well, we never assigned anything to exterior roof. That's We've never created a material called this exterior roof. We've never assigned anything to exterior roof. So what is this? Where is this coming from? And how do we get control over it? Well, as with all things in the PHPP, if we want to take a look at this component, we can go to the Components Worksheet. And the Components Worksheet is, of course, where we're going to uh, manage, store, and manage all of our building assemblies. Scroll over to the right here. All of our glazing, window frames, and a bunch of other elements. So this uh, components worksheet is where we're going to manage all of this type of information. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can see a little bit better. Well, here's exterior roof. So I have a building system named exterior roof. It has a total thickness and a really terrible U value, 1.4. So let's see how this U roof is getting put together. And the way that we see what the assembly looks like for this roof is in the U values worksheet. So I'm going to go from the components worksheet to the U values worksheet, and I'm going to see if I can find exterior roof. Let me zoom in a bit here, and let's scroll down, and here we are. Assembly number two, exterior roof. You can see here it's got a U value of 1.4. It's got a thickness of uh, 112 centimeters, and it is made of four inches of concrete, about a meter of air and then some acoustic tile. So not one lick of insulation in the whole assembly. So that's why we have such a terrible U value. It's basically just four inches of concrete and a bunch of air space, so like a drop ceiling and acoustic tile. So, so, so no insulation whatsoever. So yes, we would have a very high U value in this case. Well, where is all this information coming from? Who, who, who set this up? Who created this? Where did this come from? You can see here it's styled in the sort of blue coloration, meaning that it's coming from the grasshopper scene. So that coloring, that styling, is an indication that the data is coming from the grasshopper scene. So it's getting pushed through from the grasshopper scene. And so where in grasshopper is this information getting set? How can we change it? How can we improve it? Let's go back to our grasshopper scene here. Um, and what's happening is because we haven't set any constructions, by default, Honeybee is helping us out and it's applying a bunch of constructions to the different surfaces in the scene. In order to create a, a valid Energy Plus simulation that we can use, we need to have a bunch of constructions and materials, and so we're going to apply a bunch of de uh, defaults there um, uh, to the different surfaces until we actually apply something more intentionally. 
So how can we see which uh, surfaces are being applied to, to, to what? Let's just review some of the basic honeybee functionality here. So this uh, um, is not IDF to pH, but just your basic honeybee functionality. If I want to see what surface or what material is applied to my roof assembly here, there's a couple different ways I could do it. Um, let's see, one way would be to come in and we can actually use the surface labels. So I could, uh, we'll just do a quick, um, uh, don't worry too much about this because we're going to delete this as soon as we're done with it. But let me I'm gonna take my honeybee zone and feed it into the, the surface labels. And then I'll use my attribute, um, uh, surface attribute element here. And uh, instead of the name, let's show the energy plus construction. So the energy plus construction, notice here I've got exterior roof. I could make that a little bigger. Let's see, maybe if I do that as a, whoops, two. Whoa, that's maybe a little too big. There we go. So exterior roof is being applied to the roof surface. Notice exterior wall, exterior wall, uh, exterior floor on the floor. Right? So exterior roof. So the name of this construction that's being applied is exterior roof. We can also see that in the output here. So we have our, our labels. So there's exterior roofs. That's the name of the construction. Now, if we want to learn a little bit more about how this construction is put together, we can use the Honeybee Decompose material. So I could come in here and I could go to the um, 06 Energy and I could go and find, um, where is it? Decompose Energy Plus Construction. So here I have to give it a construction name. And so I want to isolate just uh, this top one here. So let's just do a quick, um, Let's just do a quick uh, uh, list item. So take our take our list, and it's the zeroth position in the list. So we'll just take zero as our index. And here now we're getting just that exterior roof. I'll feed that into the construction name. And now what do we see? Well, we see the material buildup, and we see a U value, 1.44 just like before, just like we saw in our PHPP. This is watts per square meter Kelvin. So here's our assembly, 100 millimeters of concrete, four inches of concrete, big airspace, some acoustic tile, no insulation, right? It's the exact same assembly that we see here in our PHPP, right? So a couple different ways that we can see that. So how then, all right, so if that's our assembly, so this is the construction assembly. It's just a default assembly. How can we apply a better assembly? Well, we can use the basic Honeybee tools. So we can definitely use the basic Honeybee tools to create assemblies just like we always would in our, uh, in our Honeybee scene. So let me delete all this. Let me get rid of all that. And we could, if we wanted to, come in here and we could say, let's build a new uh, Honeybee Energy Plus construction. Fine. And let's name it um, Ed's Better Roof. So this will be a better roof assembly. And uh, what else do we need? We're going to need some material. So we need we definitely need a material. So let's use a Honeybee No Mass Opaque Material. So this will just be a really simple No Mass Opaque Material. So I'll plug it into layer one. I've got to get rid of the other layers here. Uh, so we've, we'll, let's just say it's a single layer. And we'll call this... Um, I don't know. Um, in, we'll just do a simple, a simple one here. So rather than doing a, a you know a, a full detailed build up, let's just do a simple one one element construction. So we'll call this um, we'll call this uh, roof build up, and we'll just do the whole thing as one as one element here for for now. Uh, we need to give it a, a, a metric R value for this to work. Um, and remember, we've got a couple of helpers here. So if you're not familiar with metric R values, if you're in the US uh, and you're more, more used to working in um, IP R values, there are some, some helpers here in the Honeybee tools. So let's take a look at one of those. Oh, uh, um, sorry, uh, these are in the ladybug tools. So in the ladybug tools here, um, if we go to extra, we have an R IP, an, an IP R value, to an R value in SI. So we could drop that into the canvas here. And this is just a simple converter. So let's say we want an R38 um, roof assembly, right? Sort of code minimum in, in many parts of the country. And what does that give us for an RSI? It's going to be like an R, yeah, an R6 or so. 
right? So just doing a unit conversion there. Let's pass that in to our R value. And this guy is now working. So this is working. It's a, we're getting a valid energy plus construction out the back end here. It's just a single layer, my buildup, better roof. Um, in order for this to work, we're going to have to add it to the Honeybee um, uh, um, uh, library. So we have to add the ener add to the Energy Plus library. So I'm going to add this uh, construction to the Energy Plus library, and I will set overwrite to true, and then I'll set add to project library to true as well. And you'll see here we'll get a um, so Ed's better roof is added to the project library. So at this point now, I can take my better roof and I can apply it as a construction material here. No, it didn't work. What happened here? Uh, oh, right. Um, of course, it needs to be all caps. So the capitalization has to match there. So Ed's... Oops. Better roof. Right, so that should work. There we go. And let's take a look at our PHPP. And in our PHPP, Ed's better roof is being applied to all of our surfaces. Yeah, so that wasn't really what we wanted. We we wanted to apply it to just the roof. Um, so to do that properly, I would have to I would have to feed in a list of constructions. Um, corresponding to the order of the surfaces and the geometry here. So I could either, you know, I could either uh, use the honeybee, um, I could, you know, call uh, different uh, elements from the construction library, I could sort of pull out the ones I wanted and sort of combine them together into a list, or I could, you know, just write out the list in, in a different way, and I could sort of manage it that way. So it's certainly, certainly doable. We could definitely do it this way. We can manage all of our information in the sort of honeybee scene here. Um, that's totally, totally doable. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you a, a slightly different way that we can manage it. But let's just, let's just check what happened here. So, so we did, let's just see if... Um, so we did get Ed's better roof. Let's go to our um, heating worksheet and see what that did to our, our overall performance. So notice I have a much better uh, U value. My heat loss went way down. And if I go to my verification worksheet now, uh, now we're down at 35. So much better result for our specific heat demand. Um, uh, and so, um, you know, th th this is how we would work with this. We would adjust some parameters and keep an eye on our totals here uh, and sort of watch those totals as we adjust different parameters um, uh, in, in these assignments. Now, this isn't great because I've applied that, you know, roof R value to all of the surfaces. So obviously that wouldn't be appropriate. What we want is a better, more control. We want, we want a higher level of detail and controllability. Um, and we want to be able to assign materials or constructions on a surface-by-surface -surface basis. So in the next uh, video, we'll look at a, a, a different way of managing this, um, a, a way that uses parameter assignment back in the Rhino scene again. And we'll look at some, some new tools ar ar around that as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these elements out of here because we're going to sort of um, get rid of that for now. We'll let this go back to default assignment for everything. Let's go back to default parameter assignment. and. Um, uh, and then we'll come back and, and look at how we can start to actually uh, assess or, or um, establish the surface constructions in, in the Rhino scene there. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.